like all of the swing states. The reason why this one I feel like is my potentially most accurate map is because I do think the pollsters are hurting. Hurting means they're just, ah, yeah, it's 50-50 or 49-49. It's tied, bro. What are we going to do, bro? I think they're hedging because they want to protect their reputations, and if they just say it's 50-50, whoever wins after, they can go, see, oh, we said it was 50-50. One of the people won. Ooh, look at that. And we'll, we'll do a story later on. Nate Silver is now even accusing the pollsters of hurting. So when you have, when you have the major pollsters hurting and you have the Atlas Intel and all these other uh, Trafalgar and all these other right-wing pollsters flat out making shit up that's pro-Trump. Right, let's just call a spade a spade. These are the people who were most wrong in 2022 in the midterms, and they're out there confidently like, Trump plus eight in Iowa, right? Um, when the right-wing pollsters are making up pro-Trump shit and the respected pollsters are hurting, it is giving this misleading impression of like a super-duper close race, right? Or if anything, like, oh, it's leaning a little bit towards Trump. Just like, I think now uh, Nate Silver flipped it to slightly pro-Kamala, but just the other day, he, he was still... Uh, Trump, 52% chance of winning. I just, it's amazing to me that Nate Silver can admit, yeah, they're hurting. The major pollsters are hurting, and these right wing pollsters are garbage. But then he, like, uses them in his prediction, right? He uses them in the prediction. That doesn't make any sense to me. So if my read on that is correct, they are undersampling young voters, undersampling angry older women, then um, there really is a giant sleeper Kamala vote out there. And in that scenario, basically all the swing states are going to end up going to her, right? So this is my, let's call it the middle map, the split the difference map. It's Kamala 319, probably the one that is most quote-unquote realistic, right? Now let's go to my bullish for Kamala map. <sighs> bullish for Kamala map, y'all. Bullish for Kamala map, y'all. Bullish for Kamala map. You ready? In this map, she wins not only every single swing state. I also gave her Iowa. And I gave her Florida. This boy done lost his mind, y'all. Did, did, I, did I lose my mind? Did I lose my mind? We're going to find out, right? So uh, this is best case scenario for Kamala. She wins Pennsylvania. She wins all the blue wall states. She wins North Carolina, Georgia. She wins Arizona, Nevada. And she shocks the world by winning Iowa and winning Florida. Florida is not supposed to be a swing state. It's not. But there have been some polls now that have come out of there uh, that are like Kamala down five, Kamala down three. This is like the ultimate test of is there a sleeper Kamala vote theory? You know, let's because uh, let's think of it like this. There's a, let's say there's a three point miss in a pro Kamala direction, right? So the pollsters are hurting, plus you got the right-wing pollsters who are just dragging the average towards Trump, right? Um, this would be like a Kamala three-point miss in her direction, and that would take Florida and make it genuinely competitive. The other thing is Rick Scott is on the ballot there, and he's just universally hated. <laughs> when he's won his races in the past, he only wins by like one or two points in Florida, right? So I think the Democrat there in that race has a chance. Um it would be it would be earth shattering, and the election would be over quickly. But uh, I don't even need to tell you guys why I put Iowa in there. The reason I put Iowa in there is because even though that's typically viewed, oh, not a swing state, right? And uh, let's see, Hillary lost it by ten. Biden lost it by nine, right? But in the final Selzer polls, Des Moines Register poll coming out of there, they were both down by seven. So she was pretty close when all the other pollsters were like saying, oh, you're crazy, it's closer than that, etc. She was like, no, I'm right. You know, I, I believe in my methodology. She was very accurate with her polls, right? The Selzer poll just came out the other day. It's Kamala plus three. I need you to understand that anything for that poll that was Trump plus seven or worse is a disaster for Trump. Even if the, even if the poll had, uh, you know, Trump plus five, that would have been a disaster for Trump. He needs to be winning, in order for him to run a good race, he needs to be winning Iowa by like 12 points. So in other words, is, is the Iowa result a microcosm of how the whole country is right now? That there truly is a sleeper pro Kamala vote. And by the way, the numbers for independence and the numbers for older women coming out of Iowa were absolutely cataclysmic and apocalyptic for Trump. 
if that is replicated to one extent or another across the country, there's going to be some surprising results. There's going to be some surprising results, and that could manifest in Kamala winning Iowa, winning Florida, etc. So again, to reiterate here, I'll break it down for you guys one more time. Ready? My most bullish on Trump, bearish on Kamala result is Kamala still wins 276 to 262. My split the difference, middle of the road, probably most likely result is Kamala 319, uh, Trump 219. This is basically her winning every swing state, uh, but nothing else, right? And then my most uh, bullish on Kamala, bearish on Trump, is Kamala 355, Trump 183. And this would mean Kamala wins all of the swing states. So Nevada, Arizona, North Carolina, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, but also throw in there Iowa and Florida. So that's my breakdown. In other words, I think Kamala's going to win. I think Kamala's going to win. And a final point I'll make here is a very straightforward one. Uh, she has just run a better campaign than Trump has. She just has. She just has. Uh, another uh, data point on that is... What was the number? Trump was only winning 89% of Republicans in that uh, Selzer poll, I believe it was. Or was that the YouGov poll? I forget. It was one or the other, but he was only winning 89% of Republicans, and Kamala was winning like 95 or 96% of Democrats. And so she genuinely has like picked off plenty of disaffected Republicans, getting the breakaway independence. The older women are coming out strong for her. She's just run a better campaign. It's been more grounded more issues focused. Uh, she really leaned into economic populism down the stretch with the anti-billionaire ads, um, really painted him as the extremist that he is, and he's not shutting up about trans issues and talking about Arnold Palmer's dick and fantasizing